Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for this new day. Um, it is a gift. And Father, we uh, just commit our hearts to treasure that gift and to make the best of it. And we just ask for your help in doing so. Um, we pray as we open up your word that you would just speak into our lives today again from this amazing story of Joseph. Uh, we love you and thank you for that in your name. Amen. Um, <coughs> So last week we talked about the purity test, and this week we sort of pick up on the, the consequences of that, at least in, in Joseph's story in Genesis 39. Um, we'll read quite a few verses here from, from, nine, or from 13 on. I think, did I put in your notes 19? That's, I think, verse 13 if I did. All right. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house... She called her household servants, look, she said, this Hebrew has brought us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me. He burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. And, and there we go again. We talked about it a few weeks ago, but, but here it is again. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. Um, he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison, and he was made responsible for there for what was done. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. Because the Lord was with Joseph, and whatever he did prospered. Now this, this is truly uh, another test of, of perseverance in the life, in the life of Joseph. And um, he, he, he had a lot of those, um, didn't he? And I, I think God, um, God works character in our in our lives to prepare us for the destiny that that he has for us and Romans 5 I think gives us probably the best formula of of what that looks like and and so I sort of want to use Romans 5 as, as sort of an outline for what we talk about today not only so but we also glory in our sufferings any of you glory in your sufferings? That word glory there actually means rejoice. There's two words in the, in the New Testament that refer to glory, and one of them is, is talking about the glory of the Lord, and, 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 uh, but, but the other one is rejoice. And this one is the, the, the one that is not used as much, and it, it means to rejoice. So we rejoice in our sufferings. Amen, right? Everybody excited? Because we know that suffering or, or tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because God has been poured out into our lives through the Holy Spirit who He has given to us. Um, now... How can we rejoice in tribulation? And why should we rejoice in tribulation? Um, how could Joseph rejoice in the midst of tribulation? I mean, this isn't the first time he had gone through some stuff. How, how could he do that? Well, I, I believe sort of laid out for us in that formula in Romans 5. And so I, I think just following that for our outline today is, is very, very helpful. So let's look at what, what he says first. Paul says first, because tribulation, why can we rejoice in it? Because tribulation produces 
perseverance. Now, here's what I want to tell you about tribulation. Um, there's no need for you to pray for it. It's going to find you. Right? Jesus, Jesus even said so much. In, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But don't worry about it because I've overcome the world, he said, right? So, so I know some of you are just, just, just dying to have this perseverance in your life. But again, you, you don't have to go praying for tribulation that brings that because it will find you in this life. It's, it's guaranteed to us. Uh, James, James said, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. Isn't the Word just encouraging us today? Are you just feeling that encouragement from the Lord? Um, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Now, perseverance is, is a little different from patience. I know God brought many of us here to Indonesia to put us right in the middle of traffic to teach us patience. Any of you ever felt that way? Clarissa, you felt that way yesterday, perhaps, coming back from Jakarta. Um, I... I actually had been going through these trials for many years before I came to Indonesia. Um, and I actually, in the, in the States, um, in, when you go to banks in the States, they will have drive-through windows, right? Um, and if, you, if you're ever in the States and happen to be at the same bank as I am, I know it sounds like it's impossible, but just in case, uh, here's how you know which line to go to. Not the one that has the most cars in it or the least amount of cars, but go to the line that I'm not in. <laughs> All right? Because that's how you know you'll, you will get the shortest line. It doesn't matter if 10 cars are in one line and two are in the other. If I'm in the one with two, it's, it's going to go slower. Uh, it, it's a gift I have. I, I mean, it, it really, it, it's a spiritual gift found in 3 Corinthians. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and it's just like I can go and it, two cars in front of me. But these people, these people are going to act like they've never filled out a deposit slip. And they're going to act like they've never seen a tube that comes down that, you know, that uh, little pipe thing. They're, they're, they're going to act like they've never seen that before. And, and then the person in front of me inevitably sends the tube back to the banker. Never send the tube back to the banker if you're in a drive through teller when you're about to leave, right? But the person in front of me always does. It's a long process. Now, I know it sounds like I'm bitter, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just telling you one of the ways the Lord's honed in on this patience thing with me. There are a lot of other ways, but the bank is just, just one of them. Uh, boy, was I relieved when they came up with this uh, automatic deposit stuff. It literally saved my life. Um, but persevere, our patience is waiting with contentment. All right? So it is keeping our heart right while we wait. But perseverance is, is different than, than patience. Perseverance is, is fighting the battle while you are waiting. Uh, and, and perseverance is... is <laughs> usually a long and a difficult trial. For Joseph, it was 13 years from the time he got this dream to, to the time that it began to come into fruition. For 13 years, trial after trial. Uh, amazing the stuff he had to go through. And, and, and during that time, he was, he was not just having to be patient, but he was having to fight this battle while waiting of, of being um, kill, killed off in the eyes of his father by his brothers, right? Sold in slavery, um, falsely accused, put in prison. He's having to fight these battles. It's not just a matter of patiently surviving them. He's having to fight these battles. The same with David. It was 13 years uh, from the time he was anointed king. 13 years of being chased down by Saul. Uh, before he would step into that anointing that he received 13 years before to be king. 13 years Paul served in the church of Antioch before he went on his first missionary journey. I don't know what the significance is of 13, but 13 years for these guys. For Abraham, it was 25 years of, of, of trials. For Moses, 40 years of of. Uh, roaming around in the wilderness. Anyone feeling encouraged yet? 
Listen, sometimes these trials are, are, I mean, sometimes they take a while in our life. And God's saying, I want you to have perseverance. I want you to be willing to, to, to fight this battle while you're going through it. Uh, because this tribulation is to produce perseverance in your life. And you say, well, why is it so important that this, this character of perseverance be developed in my life? Because perseverance produces character. Perseverance produces character. Uh, this is the only thing, and, and maybe you found something else, and that's, that's great. If you can show that to me, I'd love to see it. But this is the only thing that I found in the Bible that directly references building our character is, is this idea of perseverance in the middle of trial or perseverance through a trial. Um, everywhere, everywhere Joseph finds himself, um, he ends up second in command. Do you notice that? I mean, here in this story, it sort of sounded the same when he ended up in prison. It, it, it sounded about the same as when he ended up in Potiphar's house. And, and in a couple of weeks, we'll see it sounds about the same as when he ended up in Pharaoh's courts, right? That, that his gift of leadership, remember, your gift's going to work no matter the circumstances you're in. The gifts that God has laid on your life, they're going to work. Right. And, and he's put in Potiphar's or he's, he's put in Potiphar's house, it says he rises second in command. Potiphar had to question nothing that was in Joseph's hands here. He's put in prison. It says uh, he excelled very quickly, apparently. Right. And the warden put him in charge of of everything in the prison. And he didn't have to give any thought to anything that it was in Joseph's in Joseph's hands. And the same will be said of him um, when he's when he's in Pharaoh's uh, court. Uh, Hebrews 5.8 says that obedient, or, or he learned obedience from what he suffered. And I think that this can be said of, of Joseph. All of those trials that he faced um, were, were teaching him obedience. And he, he was obedient in the midst of them. And, and when his brothers sold him off, he stayed obedient. When he went into the house of Potiphar, when, when Potiphar's wife... Uh, falsely accused him. He stayed obedient in his heart. He persevered. And there was a character that was, that was being built here. Now, as he's in prison, something strange happens, right? He's, he's in there with the baker and the, and the butler, and we know that, that through this, these dreams that the baker is going to lose his head, and, and we know that the butler is going to be released and, and go back into service of, of Pharaoh, right? But I want you to look with me at, at, at uh, chapter 40, verses 12 through 15. And I, I just want to tell you what I'm about to say. Um, it, it's just an opinion, all right? So, so I, I'm just drawing an opinion based on this verse. You don't have to agree with this, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, this is what it means, Joseph said to them. These guys had dreams. The, the three branches are three days. Within three days... Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position and will put, your, and will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand and, and just as you used to do when you were in his cupbearer. Um, and, and so he told the baker, hey, you're, you're, you're going to die in three days, right? But he's, he's, telling, the, uh, he's telling the butler, you're going to be restored into service. Uh, listen to verse 14. But when all goes well with you, remember me. And show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in to a dungeon. Uh, now, again, this is just a random, random opinion. All right. Um, but two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. Right. And, and uh, the, the butler remembered remembered Joseph in the in that time now who gave Pharaoh that dream God um, you know I, I this thought just came to me uh, as we're as we're studying for this uh, God could have gave Pharaoh that dream two days later right um, and and it just could have been I'm not saying it was it just it just could have been that uh, in jo Joseph interprets this dream for the butler, tells him what's going to happen, and then he says, hey, remember me. He drops a hint 
in his mind. And, and it could have been that God was about ready to deliver him, put him in Pharaoh's house. And then Joseph says to the butler, hey, remember me when you go, when you go see Pharaoh. I, drop a hint for me. And, you know, it could have been that God said, ah, he's not ready. And if I promote him now, if the next thing, the next thing that, that, that he's needing to do, he might think he can get there by dropping a hint. Still needs a little time to develop that character in his life. Now, again, that's, that's just an opinion, but I do know this for a fact. God never rewards manipulation. God never rewards manipulation. Uh, and, and you know what? It's God's grace. It's God's grace that does not put us in our destiny until we have the character to support it. Because he knows that if he does, we won't be ready for it, and we will fall. I wonder how many times God has wanted to promote us or bless us, but before he does, maybe right before he does, we take matters into our own hands, and we begin to drop hints, uh, and, and, and God says, wait, they're not ready. They need a little more time. They need a little more character development. They're going to get there, but not yet, not yet. Um, again, perseverance produces character. And character, Romans says, produces hope. Character is not only how we act, um, but it's also how we react. And we see this with Joseph. Joseph did the right thing and suffered the wrong results. It wasn't just about him acting right. It was about him reacting right. He ran from temptation and still ended up in prison. Have you ever done the right thing and maybe some wrong things happened to you even though you had done what was right? Someone still lied about you. Uh, someone else got the job or the promotion or, or someone said something that wasn't true. Joseph did the right thing and still, still um, suffered bad results. Um, but all through it, he kept a hope in his heart. He kept a hope in his heart of the dream that, that, God, that God had given him. Now, I, I, again, in this, in this text, it, I, I don't believe it's coincidence uh, that, that Joseph's father gave him this robe and his brothers used the robe to, to try to uh, uh, or produce the robe as false evidence to his father uh, to get rid of Joseph's memory in his father's mind. I don't think it's any, any coincidence that Potiphar's wife used Joseph's robe uh, as evidence against him to falsely accuse him for these, for these accusations of, of rape. Um, but, but here's what I want you to know. Uh, Satan has no new tricks in your life. And, and so... For you today, uh, I, I just want you to think about for a moment, what is it that Satan is constantly coming at you against that tries to destroy your character, that tries to destroy your hope? What is he constantly bringing in to your life? Um, Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Um, Joseph interpreted the butler and the baker, which to me says... That even in the midst of these, even in the midst of these trials that were trying to take him out, he remained hopeful. He could have, he could have went into a corner of that prison and just wallowed in his misery, and said, "I can't believe this is happening to me again." But he stayed hopeful that even while he was in prison, these guys come in, these guys come in, and and he is still, um, he is still in a in a place of keeping his eyes open and ministering to them. Um, Paul said in Philippians 4, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, which is well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens me. Uh, a lot of times we'll see that, that passage, I think, misinterpreted. I mean, hey, I can do anything through Christ. 
Paul, Paul's saying, hey, you can make it through anything. You can make it when you don't have anything to eat. You can make it when you don't have a lot of money in your pocket because the Lord is our strength. And I think Joseph had that same kind of hope, whether he was finding success in Potiphar's house or in prison. He had a hope that came from the Lord. The last point, very quickly, is hope produces appointments. Uh, Romans 3, again, uh, says, and hope does not disappoint. Disappoint literally means missed appointments. Uh, uh, and, and we can find those kind of missed appointments in all areas of our life. Relationally, financially, we can be disappointed. But Joseph, again, uh, chapter 40, verse 6 and 7, when Joseph came to, the, uh, to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him, why do you look so sad today? Again, even in the midst of his greatest trial, he was still finding divine appointments. Divine appointments, and he didn't miss that because he was sitting off in a corner wallowing about how bad his position was uh, right now. Uh, in, a, in a church, right, in the church world, we call these many times divine appointments. Uh, but just remember, you won't have those divine appointments if you're sitting in a place of self-pity, self-doubt, or insecurity. You only find those divine appointments when there's a hope in your heart. Uh, that God is who He says He is, and even in the midst of your worst trial, uh, that you still have a hope that is founded in Him. Let me pray with you. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Help us, Lord, to have uh, the same kind of faith in you that, that Joseph has. And Lord, let our tribu tribulations produce perseverance, our perseverance character and our character build hope that will bring divine appointments into our life. We love you and we thank you for this in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys.